Hello there, I'm Shane Young, and I get the privilege of helping you learn Copilot Studio. But before we start, I did want to let you know that I worked with the Microsoft product team to create this awesome training for all of you Power Platform rock stars. Cool? Cool. Okay, let's get to it. In this section, we are going to look at an IT FAQ agent built using Copilot Studio that is triggered by a user's conversation. This agent, or sometimes called chatbot, will use SharePoint as a knowledge source to answer questions and actions to do things like create a support ticket or help order a new PC. When it comes to answering questions, we will use a combination of orchestration, which allows the agent to answer unscripted questions, along with topics where we can predefine a structured conversation. And of course, along the way, we're going to highlight all the places that your existing Power Apps and Power Automate skills are applicable. As load code makers, we have a real advantage when it comes to working with Copilot Studio. Sound like fun? I thought so. Then let's just switch over to my desktop and take a look. Let's start by looking at our chat-based agent. So when I have a chat-based agent, there's really two ways that you primarily interact with them. One is I've added the agent to Teams. So here you can see that the same way that I chat with my coworkers and my teammates, I have the ability to chat with the IT support assistant we're about to demo. So integrating with Teams is a great way to build these conversational agents. This allows your users to talk to the agent in the same place they talk with their other coworkers. Now, the other way that you might interact with the agent is by through the M365 Copilot chat experience. So let's switch over there real quick. Here I am in my M365 Copilot chat, logged in with my business account, my M365 account. And because I have the M365 Copilot license, I have both a worker web, but that's not required in order for this scenario to work. In the scenario over on the right, I have the ability to interact with agents. So I can incorporate an agent into my chat. And there's the IT support assist that I've previously added. So if we select that, this is going to change the chat to be a conversation with that particular agent. So all the rules, actions, knowledge that we've established for it are going to now be available here. So in the same chat interface. So if you have users that prefer to chat through this interface, then they're also going to be able to use the agent and all of its capabilities from here. So for our rest of our demos, let's demo from this interface and let's ask it a question like, I want to start working from home. What should I know? Press enter. And so now it is looking through its knowledge. So it has never been trained on this question before, but one of the knowledge pieces that I gave it access to has the information that is relevant to this conversation. So on its own, it should find that knowledge and return our answer. And there you go. After a moment, it has returned the answer. You can see it has the different bullet points. It has a little bit of possum personality here, but I built that into the agent. We'll see how I did that later. And it's just trying to be generally helpful with the information. So great, you know, I'm working on working from home more. And so I want to use the company's VPN. So I'm going to install it, but I'm having some problems. So I'll tell the agent just that. Great, I'm attempting to use VPN, but it isn't working. Help! And so when we do this, the same type of thing. There's another document in there that has some VPN troubleshooting guides. So the agent will find that knowledge and then return back those results. And you can see here that it's like, hey, here's the steps that have been laid out for you so I can follow along. Now, what's really neat about that is in the document, the last step is if the issue persists, you may need to open a support ticket. And so then down here, you can see it says, would you like me to create a support ticket for you? So what this is, is the orchestration realizes that there is an action available for creating support tickets. It saw that that was my instructions. And so it's offering to do that for me. Once again, I never told it when you read this document to do this, it is just on its own figuring this out. So let's tell it, yes, please create a support ticket. So we're gonna press enter here. And after a moment, it says your ticket has been created. So it didn't prompt me for additional information because it knows what my problem is because it's been having this conversation with me. So it's taking the details from the things I've told it, it's combining it with the actions, it's combining it with some of the information that it's told me to try and is opening all that up for us as a support ticket. If we switch over to our SharePoint, this is our ticketing system and you can see that the VPN issue has been logged and the complete descriptions here and it was generated by our agent about a minute ago, right? It took me that long to switch tabs, come pokey. But there you go. So the agent had the conversation, it offered helping advice and so it didn't work out. So it went ahead and escalated the ticket and created it for me. And here we're showing it creating the ticket into SharePoint, but it could have done it into a Dataverse driven system. It could have written it into ServiceNow Wherever your system is, as long as it's accessible to the Power Platform, we can go ahead and push that ticket in 
with or without prompting the user for additional information. All right, let's switch back over to our agent. And it's a busy day, right? I've got more things to do, so let's ask it. Thanks, now I wanna get a new PC. What do I need to do, right? I'm gonna work from home, I want a fancy PC. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna hit enter again. And now in this particular case, we have trained it how to deal with this conversation. So what we've done here is we've created a topic. Topics are ways for you to have a structured conversation. So in the case when they request a new PC, I want to ask them some specific questions. Real easy for me to say. I tripped over that word like five times, but that's okay. And what we're gonna ask them is, are you looking for a desktop or a laptop? And so here we're gonna say, all right, I'm looking for a desktop, right? From work from home, I don't need something portable. So we're gonna click on desktop, it fills it in for us, and we'll just click on the little button, right? We could have hit enter, didn't matter. And so now it's like, hey, which device are you interested in? A custom PC, general office, or a custom PC pro user? Now, what's really interesting about this is I did not hard code these choices. So over in our SharePoint site, let's switch back over there. Under devices, I actually keep all the different devices that we have available. And so the idea is that as different devices come in and out of contract or availability, we're going to update this list and our agent, it is just programmatically going to look at this list for us using one of those actions, right? Very much like we would do in Power Automate to pull that data in and then based on the asset type, we chose desktop. It is showing us those two options. Let's switch back. And so here we're gonna say we want a custom PC pro user, right? I'm a pro user. And once again, we'll hit the button. And so then now it is logging my request. It has all the information it needs. It knew who I was already. It knew my request, all those things. And so back over in SharePoint, we won't bother going and looking, but it put in a, a device order for me to get a new PC. Awesome or as it says there, possum. For the last conversation, let's fast forward a little bit. I've got my new PC and now I'm ready to get admin access, right? I need, I'm important, I should have admin access. So I'm gonna say, last thing, I need admin access to my new desktop. And so we're going to hit enter once again and the IT support assistant is going to trigger a different topic, a different structured conversation because once again, if somebody's asking for this, then we want them to answer our specific questions so we can guide them to the correct result. So I'm gonna say I want it to install software. We'll run that and it then returns an adaptive card. So you see the cute little software logo up here? I made that, I'm so talented, I know. What I wanted to show you here was that you could have a well formatted card. And not only is the adaptive card, so this is pulling in and it would show different if I'd chosen software or hardware, but also here the list of items. We're gonna look a little bit later. We use one of our Power FX formulas, the same thing we use in Power Apps, to make this adaptive card dynamic because it's pulling in the list of supported software from a SharePoint list, just the same way that we talked about with the PCs earlier. And so then it's gonna be like, hey, if you don't see the software on the list, you'll need to open a ticket. Do you wanna open a ticket? Yes, I do. And so then here we get a little message back. What information would you like included in the support ticket? I will then add it to my own details based on our conversation. So what we're doing here is this time we open the support ticket, we wanna give them a chance to input their justification, their additional info, plus it will then tack on the, its own thing, the agent's own information to the response. So we'll just do something like, I need to install Microsoft Encarta on my PC because I'm old school, right? I don't know how many of you are old enough to remember what Microsoft Encarta was, but that was like the first really cool encyclopedia program back when we first got PCs. Anyway, not important. So we'll hit enter there. And now it's gonna prompt, what would you like this title of the support ticket to be? So we'll just give it a quick little five word or so answer. Admin access to install software. We'll press enter again, boom. Over there in that same list, our ticket has now been created. So then the normal IT processes can go. And remember, those tickets didn't have to just be in SharePoint. It could be any business data system, ServiceNow, Jira, wherever you guys put tickets, it would work out just fine. All right, so now that we've seen the agent action, let's get a little bit of a preview of some of the features that are making this agent fly. Remember that later on in the course, we're actually gonna go step-by-step step and help you build this exact agent. But for now, I just wanna kinda of give you a little preview, a little sneak peek of some of those cool features so you can get a better handle how they relate to what you just saw here in the demo. So let's switch over to Copilot Studio. All right, so that puts us at copilotstudio.microsoft.com. And here we wanna check out our IT support assistant. So we're gonna click on that. Let's get an overview of how this agent works. As you imagine, we have a name, you know, a little cute icon up here. Yeah, I made that too. A description. So descriptions are gonna give this agent, you know, what is its purpose and what is going on. So you wanna make sure you have a good description so it knows how to be used and what's gonna be used. Then we have instruction. This is where we tell it how to take action and do the different things we want, right? If we say edit, it's a little easier to read this way. You can see things like, remember we saw those dog jokes here? Well, we told it, use humor, specifically dog jokes and puns related to the topic. So that's why those dog jokes were in there. If you didn't like them, 
great, delete that line. No more dog jokes. Here you can see that this is Roy told it. Hey, how, here's how you create support tickets. When you create a ticket, this is what you need to do. So we laid all of this out as instructions. So this is how you set it to go. And if you look here, the way that this is happening is through orchestration. Orchestration is what's letting the large language model or LLM make decisions and determine. So based on our descriptions, our instructions, the different actions and knowledges that we've made available to it, it is going to determine what to do to best get the outcomes that we've requested. So speaking of knowledges, let's switch over to knowledge. And so in knowledge, this is where in our case, we added the IT help desk knowledge documents. So if we click into here, this is a direct link to a specific SharePoint document library that has all the IT support knowledge available. Now notice when you add knowledge, you wanna give it a good name and a description. Descriptions are so important to making Copilot Studio work. We'll talk about that more later, but just remember, you always wanna give a good thorough description anytime, not the generic built-in descriptions. And so here, the knowledge source provides information that is used to answer IT related questions. So when it got a question about a VPN, it said, do I have any knowledge sources? It said, well, VPNs are tied to IT and it connected the dots and that's how it knew where to look. Now in the case of SharePoint as well, if you go over here to settings and then go to generative AI, if you have M365 Copilot in your tenant, even one person has it, you have the ability to enable this enhanced search results. And by doing this, this allows for a much richer searching experience because now it looks that knowledge not as lexical, but as semantic search. So very technical answer, but just know that you get much better search results. Now it does change the amount of messages that are used by your agent, but we're not gonna worry about that today. So let's get back out of settings. In knowledge, right, we can use SharePoint. But if we go back to knowledge, keep in mind that we add knowledge, we have the ability to use public websites, SharePoint, Dataverse. If we go over here to advanced, we've got some different options baked in here, and they're always adding more connectors and more ways to get it additional data. So don't just think this is a Microsoft centric solution. Yes, we're using our Microsoft Power Platform skills, but we can talk to all of these different knowledge repositories out there. And if your knowledge repository doesn't show up here under add knowledge, let's cancel out. Then we also have the ability to use actions. Actions are a lot like your Power Automate cloud flows. This is where we wanna do something. So for example, we saw earlier that we wanted to be able to get to different devices. So if we click here, this is just a SharePoint get items, the same thing you use in Power Apps and Power Automate. Now we do have to configure authentication. We don't set the description again, make sure that people know what they're using. And then we go and define the inputs. So some of the inputs are hard coded, right? The SharePoint site we wanna use, the SharePoint list that we wanna use. But then down here, we're like, hey, I need to have a filter query. The same way that we would write in Flow a OData query, we're gonna put that here. Now my OData query is a little bit more complicated and so I wanted to be able to prescribe exactly what I wanted there to make sure that we're getting back the correct devices. So if we scroll over here and click right here, you're gonna see that we can actually use PowerFX formulas. That same language we use in Power Apps. And look, asset type, EQ for equals, single quote, and they're pulling in a global variable called asset type, and then another single quote. This is very similar to a Power Apps formula you've written hundreds or thousands of times potentially. And we use the same language, the same style. The variable's a little bit different because we're using a Copilot Studio variable, but the conceptual language is exactly the same language. So this gives us a huge advantage because now we understand. We already knew how to do OData filters from using Flow. We already knew how to write this formula to create that dynamically. So we're in business. We just had to kind of fill in the blanks. All right, let's cancel out of this. And so also, right, we have inputs. We also have outputs. So in different cases, you might want to get the results. So maybe after we got the devices, right, we got the list back, that table of data. And so we're going to have to use that in a moment. But this is how that data got outputted and where it got stored. So we had access to it. Now, when you click back up here on actions, you can see that I've used a bunch of ones you're probably familiar with. If we go to add an action, these are just the same actions that you see throughout the Power Platform, right? Like if we searched here for Microsoft Teams, look, there's all of those same actions. So we want to have it have chats. If we wanted to interact with our Dataverse data or with our email box or with our SharePoint or anything in Azure, or it doesn't even have to be Microsoft stuff, right? Like if we go here and we search for SAP, look, there's a bunch of SAP actions. There's a lot of really neat stuff that we can do here. And in addition, there's a whole other drop down here. If you want to get outside the scope of what we do in the Power Platform, we're not going to cover this today, but there's a lot of interesting things to be had there. Noting one of them, new Power Automate flows. We can even use existing cloud flows or build cloud flows specifically for 
being ran by this agent. So maybe we want a way to get more information. We want to kick off a flow process. Anything that you want to do with flow, right? We can also trigger here from our agent. All right, let's cancel out all this. All right, we skipped over topics. So we'll kind of backpedal to that one. So here are topics. These are the more traditional Power Virtual Agent pieces. They've been here for a while, but these are where we can have structured, predefined conversations. And there's a lot of them that are pre-built in, pre-configured for you to make the agent work. But if we look at custom, these are the ones that we are more likely to interact with. And so for example, when we did the whole get admin access, if we click on this, this is a topic I created. We define a trigger. So when they ask about getting administrator access, that's what tells this thing to wake up and do its job. It then asks the question, do you want to install software, hardware, because they want it. We then have a condition. And so down here, we're going to do different things. So like if they chose install software, like we did, it goes down this branch, it set a variable to software, and then it continued. But same thing for hardware, or if they chose because I want it, we're just like, nope, you're not allowed. And we just end right there. So we have control of the flow. Now, assuming they did choose software, then we run our action, right? Get item software when it returns that data back as a table of data. So this was using that action that we just talked about. Now, if we scroll down here a little bit further, it then presented that adaptive card. Remember my cute little software logo icon thing that I made? That's right. If we click on this, we're going to see that those are the same adaptive cards you've been using in Teams or Outlook already. And in here, look, there's an if formula. If variable equals software, then do this. That's the same type of if logic you'd use in Power Apps. Or down here, it got back a list of the different softwares. And so we're on the fly doing a concat. That's a Power Apps formula that turns a table of data into text because the JSON for the adaptive card is just text. So we had to kind of transform it but I just used my same power app skills, bingo, bingo, we had what we needed. Also, it understood from the adaptive card that there was different uh, variables that came out of here. So open ticket, yes, open ticket, no. And so we're capturing that in the outputs. So then we could come back here and we have a way to look at the output and then we're gonna do a condition there. And so this is, remember, you saw it pop up, he said yes. So this was left over from when I was troubleshooting, but I wanna make sure that that was there. So if they click on yes, it triggers here. And then that is what runs the action SharePoint create item support ticket, which that action is already configured in the instructions on what to do, what information to collect to do what it needs to do. And then the topic ends. So topics are a great way when you want to make sure that something very defined happens. Maybe you need to interact with variables, but you want a lot of control. Whereas just having actions and knowledge in the instructions that's when you want to let the orchestration determine what happens or doesn't happen. All right, a couple other quick little things to look at here. So we have activity. Activity, this is the run history. So you can drill in and see what activities have previously taken effect. You can go in there, we can click in, drill, see what's happening in those conversations and kind of replay them so we can see what was going on there. So those are a great way for you to go and troubleshoot what's happened after the fact or just get an overview of how your users are using your agent. Speaking of how your users are using your agent under analytics here, this is going to show you the different engagement, the satisfaction, the number of sessions. Now, obviously this one is just used by me because it's my demo agent. So there's not a lot going on with this one, but you can imagine as you roll these things out, you're going to be able to come in here and see what's been going on and the different outcomes. The satisfaction score. So one of the topics you can trigger throughout the process is going to be the CSAT or customer satisfaction little survey that it has built into it and you can reconfigure it, but this is where it would publish that satisfaction score. You can see down here what knowledge sources I've been using, actions, if there's been any user feedback. So not something we're we'll gonna worry about too much today, but I wanted you to get the idea of what was possible here. And then last but not least, we have channels. And so this is where you control where your agent gets used. So in the case of most of these agents, the ones that I'm concentrating on today, we're publishing those to Teams and Microsoft 365, just like the agent you saw here. But I wanted you to kind of keep in mind that this can be a lot bigger than that. You can start building agents to run in other websites. You can do it with Facebook or Slack or Telegram or Line. Like, there's a lot of different ways that you can build these agents to start to interact with lots of different places. Today, we're kind of focused on that core Microsoft 365 scenario, because let's face it, as power platform people, that's where you and I live today. But just know that as you continue to grow your skills here, these agents don't have to be just kept as internal agents. There we have it, a fully working custom agent, all leveraging skills and technologies you likely use today. SharePoint, PowerFX, 
and Power Automate based actions and connectors all assemble to build a highly functional custom agent for being the front line for your IT help desk. In the next module, we're going to use Copilot Studio to build an autonomous agent, one that's triggered by system data changing. So instead of reacting to a user's chat, it's going to just trigger as the system data is updated. All right, I'll just see you over there in a second.